Hey everyone, what's up? My name's Jeffrey Way, and welcome back to NetTuts Plus. In today's video quick tip, we're going to be taking a look at uh, some clever things you can do with inset shadows, with CSS3 inset shadows. All right, so let's come and take a look. Let's say you have this button here, and you're going to use it on your slider. But the only problem is uh, you just have the single button. You don't have a hover state. You don't have a active state and things like that. So you have a couple options. One, you can go back to Photoshop and do that yourself. Self, but if you're not really a designer, you may end up making it look worse than before. So with the CSS3 and shadows, we can mimic these hover and active states really quite easily. So I'll show you how to do that today. So let's go ahead and build a quick project structure. I'm going to use the free structure tool that you can get from NetTuts. And we'll give it a name of project, something like that will be fine. And it needs an index.html file. And we'll also give it a style.css file. And I'll go ahead and drag my button in. All right, let's use Espresso today. And as you can see, we're just linking to our style sheet. And we have our button. So within our markup, all we need here, you know, this might be in a slider you're using this button or something. Uh, we'll just say read more, and that'll be it. OK, so if I go ahead and preview it, there you go. And now let's go into style.css. And the first thing I want to do is position the button on the page. So this isn't applicable to the button itself. We're just giving it some. And we'll use the text align trick, at least at first, to center the text on the page. There you go. All right, so now let's go ahead and style this button. So by default, let's go ahead and give it a box shadow. So if we want to go into Chrome and check this out, we first need to add the button as a background, and then we need to apply a shadow to it. So we'll say background URL button ping and it should not repeat. Now, if you keep refreshing, you're not going to see it. And why is that? And it's because, by default, an anchor tag is an inline element. So even if we set the width and height equal to the width and height of that image, you're still not going to see it take shape. Notice that? And the reason is because it's an inline element. So let's try changing it to block, or even inline block would work. And now, if we've refreshed, now you'll see that take effect. But now it's not bound to the text align trick. So what we'll do is we have our width and height, and now we'll set margin auto. And the only reason we're doing this is to get it centered on the page. There you go. All right, so, but now we don't need this read more text, so let's get rid of that. Text align, and we'll just use that old text align trick. I'm sorry, text indent. All right, all right, but now we need to add a shadow, just a base shadow. All right, well, I'm just going to do the WebKit version right now, WebKit box shadow. And we can set the X offset, the Y offset, the amount of blur, and then an optional fourth parameter, which is the spread. And then finally, the color you want it to be. So if we set it to red, and we were set five pixels of spread alone, that's what you're going to get right there. And it's kind of like an outline. But the problem is, this is a, a ping 24, which means there's transparency around these edges. So when you apply an outline or shadow or a border, it's going to come out as a square. So an easy way you can get rid of this is to use a border radius and make it equal to the dimensions, or roughly equal to the dimensions of the circle. So now if I refresh, can you see how that takes shape? Very cool. Now there's another cool thing is a lot of people don't know that you can apply an optional inset parameter as the very first parameter. So watch, we have it like it is, and what I'll do here, and copy this to a new tab so that you can see the difference, and we'll apply inset at the beginning, and that's going to reverse it so that the border starts from the outside and works its way in as opposed to working its way out, as you can see right there. All right, but now we don't want a red, of course. We want a black. But rather than just doing something hard like that, let's make it more natural. And we'll do RGBA, 0 red, 0 green, 0 blue. And if we set it to 0 0.2, 0, 0, 0 is solid black. But if we set it to 0 0.2, and this is the alpha parameter, that's 20% black. Now, as you can see, like that. Now, of course, we don't really need too much spread, and we do need some blur. So why don't we set it to around 8 pixels worth of blur and 1 pixel of spread. And now, we don't need inset by default. So come back, and now you just have a light shadow around the button. OK. But now, when you hover over it, we need to have something. What can we do there? Well, we could try something like hover. And then we could just grab this. You could do this if you wanted. 
and maybe set it to 0.6. And if you're okay with that, that's fine, but we want it to make a little more natural, almost like a fingerprint touching the bottom. So that's not gonna be what we're gonna use here. Instead, we're going to use the optional end set parameter. When you hover over it, we'll set it like that, and we'll set eight pixels worth of blur. Why don't we up that to around 10, and set the spread to around eight pixels as well. And I'm gonna bring this back down to about 0.2. So now if I refresh and I hover over it, now because we're using the inset, it's gonna look a little better, but I still think that's too much there. So why don't we bring the uh, 20 pixels worth of blur and maybe bring the spread down to six and we'll bring down the alpha to about 10%. And now if I hover over it, it looks better, but we still have this one problem is we had the natural shadow behind the button and that shouldn't change. But when I hover over it, we lose it because now we're overriding that box shadow. So to retain this is we'll just use multiples. So if I copy that, I can then do something like this and then separate each shadow by a comma. And now when I refresh, we get the new one, but we also retain what we originally had. It's too bad we couldn't have an option to say something like inherit for the first one. That way it'll inherit any shadows and then we can append to it. That way you don't have to repeat yourself. But there's no way to do that right now to my knowledge. So if I refresh, now we're getting just a nicer effect when you hover over it. Okay, but now when you click on it, we need something as well. So we can do click events, or not really an event, but an effect is we do A active. And now when it's actively being pressed, in this case, we can just grab this. And by the way, I'm using just WebKit for now, but you would wanna copy each of these and do box shadow, something like this for each one. You would do Mozilla's form, which is gonna be Firefox, and then you would also do the official form, which would be this. But I'm not gonna waste your time watching that. Just know in your own projects, make sure you duplicate this for each one. And then here, all I'm gonna do is when you click on it, let's bring up the alpha to about 0.4 or 40%. So resting state, hover state, clicking state, and that might even be too much. Keep it subtle. Yeah, maybe even down to two, just raise it 10%, clicking on it. Yeah, and there you go. And now we've achieved hover and click states for this image without having to worry about Photoshop if you decide to change it to or to apply uh, any colors, like say you wanted red, you could get that. If you wanted a mix of red and blue, you could bring those up. Okay, and then you have total control over your shadows and you don't have to worry about Photoshop. You can do this all with CSS. Okay, so browser compliance, uh, it's gonna work in new Chrome, new Safari, Firefox, IE, who knows, you know, and in older browsers, all they're gonna see is just the standard button and I think that's just okay. It's up to you to decide. Or you can always use something like a modernizer, Paul Irish's modernizer, to provide a fallback if you want to use something different. But I think they'll be just fine without these shadows. All right, for more tips and tutorials, always subscribe to net.touchplus.com. You can do it right here. And uh, let me know your thoughts. I'll see you. Bye.